Haven Arrest Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School Lesson Number 7, Sunday, January 14, 2018. The lesson is entitled, A Bold Faith. The lesson comes from Daniel chapter 3, verses 19 through 28. We were asked to read Daniel chapter 3, verses 1 through 30. The place is Babylon. The time is 587 B.C. Living in the 21st century, it is difficult, if not impossible, to comprehend the power possessed by Nebuchadnezzar. He was, in fact, the king of the world. His desires were always fulfilled. His enemies were always killed, and his authority was never questioned. He was a brutal man living in a culture that often regarded human life as insignificant. No one argued with Nebuchadnezzar or disputed his orders. Modern day extremists give us just a hint of what life was like under his reign. The Babylonian army likewise was ruthless. Fear filled every heart when the Babylonians came near. Today's aim, facts, to understand the culture of Babylon, emphasizing the complete dominance Nebuchadnezzar held over his subjects. Principle, to explain and illustrate the total dependence Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had on their God. Application, to challenge each student to realize that the God who delivered the three young men from the furnace can likewise deliver them from distressful circumstances. Illustrating the lesson, whenever we find ourselves in difficult circumstances, we can be confident that the Lord is with us. Practical point one, bold faith reveals and provokes God's enemies. Daniel 3, 19. Two, persecution is not always the result of our wrongdoing. Verse 20. Three, our enemies cannot bind what God has set free. Verses 21 through 22. Four, even in our greatest trials, God is present with us and is in control. Verses 23 through 25. 5. God's power and protection exceed our human understanding. Verse 26. 6. Our trials provide opportunities to trust God and see his power at work in our lives. Verse 27. 7. God uses our trials for his glory so that even his enemies acknowledge his power. Verse 28. Golden text. Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who have sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him, that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. Daniel 3.28 Today we have two lesson outlines. The first is an angry enemy, Daniel 3, 19 through 23. And the second is a change superior, Daniel 3, 24 through 28. Introduction. The life of King Nebuchadnezzar in the first four chapters of the book of Daniel seems to reveal how God works in a person's heart to bring him or her to the point of realizing the need for a relationship with him. In Daniel 1, Nebuchadnezzar encountered four young men who forced him to recognize the work of God in their lives. In Daniel 2, he saw Daniel do something none of his wise men can do and was forced to recognize that Daniel served a God who was superior to all his own. In the third chapter, he was forced to recognize that no other God can do the things God does. Daniel is not present in Daniel 3, and we are not told why. Nebuchadnezzar had a huge gold image made, invited all the kingdom's leaders to come for its dedication, and insisted they bow before it when the orchestra played or be burned alive in a furnace. Whether the, the image represented himself, his kingdom, or a Babylonian deity, the three friends of Daniel could not honor the order. For for it commanded idolatry. Their re refusal led to Nebuchadnezzar's deepest, deepest fury as they stood and faced him. An angry enemy, Daniel three nineteen. Then Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar's full of fury, 
and the form of his vengeance was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was wrought to be heated. Verse 20, And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and to cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Verse 21, Then these men were bound in their coats, their hosen, and their hats, and their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Verse 22, Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent, and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Verse 23, And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Irrational fury. Daniel 3, 19-20 can we see any reason why the Lord will allow these three dedicated men to go through this trial? The devil tempts us to destroy our faith, but God tests us to develop our faith because a faith that can't be tested can't be trusted. False faith withers in times of trial, but true faith takes deeper root, grows, and brings glory to God. This explains why God permitted the three Hebrew men to be tested and then thrown into the fiery furnace. Nebuchadnezzar was furious with these men over their refusal to worship the image. Daniel 3.13 But when they were brought to him and he heard their determination to stay true to God and trust him to deliver them from the threatened fire, he became even more so full of fury. Verse 19 Even his face was distorted by his rage. This was followed by a completely irrational order to heat the furnace seven times hotter than normal. This was probably a proverbial expression meaning to make it as hot as it can possibly be made. Nebuchadnezzar's ex excessive pride caused this ridiculous outburst. As king over the mighty Babylonian empire, he demanded to be respected and highly esteemed. To have someone defy him was more than he could take. Pride has this kind of effect on people. When they are thwarted in any way, they will lash out at those they see as hindering their self-presentation. We see this in the dog-eat-dog -dog world of politics and entertainment when individuals make public accusations meant to demean others. If Nezuchadnezzar had been rational in his thinking, he would have realized that making a furnace much hotter would serve only to bring a more rapid release from any pain of burning instead of prolonging the agony. A cooler furnace actually would be more effective in its torture. But the king's irrational command was given and was quickly followed by his choice of some of his most mighty military men to bind and toss the three Israelites into the fiery furnace. Unexpected Deaths, Daniel 3, 21-22 the expression given in the text is that everything was done as quickly as possible. It has been suggested by some that the king left them fully clothed in order to be certain the flames would be more effective in burning their bodies. But more likely he was so angry that he just wanted everything to happen as rapidly as possible. Their clothing later gives evidence of the completeness of God's miraculous work, verse 27. So Daniel probably mentioned this on purpose. It was the prerogative of any Babylonian king to order and carry out whatever he wished. History tells us that Babylonian monarchs were absolutely sovereign in their kingdoms. Once those kings issued an order, it could not be changed, and no one dared to defy it. Nebuchadnezzar's authority was later described by Daniel to Belshazzar, O thou the king, the most high God gave Nebuchadnezzar thy father a kingdom, and majesty, and glory, and honor, and for the majesty that he gave him, all people, nations, and language trembled, and feared before him whom he 
would he slew, and whom he would he keep alive, and whom he would he set up, and whom he would he put down. Daniel five eighteen through 19 There was no possibility of negotiation or questioning of his decisions. Nebuchadnezzar's command to his soldiers was urgently harsh and severe. All they could do was carry out his demands as quickly and effectively as possible. The furnace was heated excessively as he had demanded, and his mighty military men took up the three Jewish men to throw them in. We can only imagine that this must have been a fearful assignment for them when they felt the intense, the intense hint, heat emanating from the furnace. They had no choice, however, but to carry out the demands of Nebuchadnezzar. In doing so, they gave their lives. The flames of the fire shot outward and immediately burned them to death. Unless one has seen another person go completely berserk with fits of fury, it is difficult to understand Nebuchadnezzar's on this occasion. A brilliant architect and a great warrior, he could be a man of great compassion and tenderness. But as an absolute monarch, he could not and would not tolerate any defiance of his will. Stand safe landing. Daniel 3.23 This furnace was probably a smelting furnace made of very thick adobe, able to withstand intense heat. Near ground level was an opening for putting in wood and charcoal, and near the top was a large opening for putting in the ore, to be melted. There were probably holes in the in the side for bellows to make the fire hotter. It would have been the top opening through which the fire roared. So when the military men approached with the three Jews, they were instantly killed. It made no difference that Nebuchadnezzar had ordered the furnace heated to a much hotter degree. For throughout their entire ordeal, the Israelite men were totally unaffected by the flames or heat. While Nebuchadnezzar was losing valuable men from his service, these three went completely into the furnace and were safe. Bound with ropes, they fell into the center of the roaring furnace, but they were completely untouched by the fire. In a furnace heated as hot as this one was, their deaths should have been instantaneously instantaneous, leaving nothing but charred corpses to hit the bottom. Instead, they fell down alive and intact with the ropes still around them. The ropes did not last long, however. Soon they were on their feet and walking around on the floor of the furnace while the flames raged all around them. Everything, everything about this reveals a miraculous intervention by God. A Changed Superior Verse 24, Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, was astonished, and rose up in haste, and spake, and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. Verse 25, He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Verse 26. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God, come forth and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth and the midst of the fire. Verse 27. And the princes, governors, and captains, and the king's counselors being gathered together, saw these men, upon whose bodies the fire had no power, nor was an hair of their head singed, neither were their clothes changed, nor the smell of fire had passed on them. Verse 28. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who have sent his angels and delivered his servants that trusted in him and have changed the king's words and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own. Astonishment, Daniel 3, 24-25 Suddenly, while Nebuchadnezzar sat and watched the proceedings, he saw something that made him leap to his feet. We 
can be certain he was a safe distance away, but obviously he could easily see inside the furnace. What he saw astonished him so much he involuntarily jumped up. His astonishment, no doubt, began when he saw the three men fall safely to the floor of the furnace still alive. What followed was something he was unable to conceive as possible and caused his sudden reaction. He, his immediate question to all those around him was, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? Their response was a quick and immediate affirmation. True, O king. Nebuchadnezzar then made several observations. He saw four men in the furnace, not three, and they were walking around freely without bonds. He also noted that they were moving around in the center of the flames, not on the outer fringes trying to escape it. What he saw was a picture of perfect peace rather than of panic or trauma. The king then noted that they were unhurt, which was impossible in light of where they were. As they calmly walked around in those flames, they were completely unharmed. We can only imagine what they might have been saying to one another. Of even greater astonishment to Nebuchadnezzar was the appearance of that fourth man, whom he described as some kind of deity. Daniel 3.25 His comment the form of the fourth is like the Son of God, indicates recognition of someone supernatural. Although it cannot be proved from the text, there is a good reason to believe this was a pre-incarnate appearance of Jesus. Being the polytheistic pagan that he was, Nebuchadnezzar would not have had any concept of the Son of God. However, the king's words can also be translated a son of the gods, and this rendering seems to be better fit his thought patterns. At the very least, he knew he was witnessing something supernatural and distinct from the, con from the condemned men. Protection, Daniel 3, 26-27. As Nebuchadnezzar stepped nearer to the opening of the furnace, he called out to the three, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God, come forth and come hither. He used their Babylonians' names, but as we noted in an earlier lesson, they did not let this bother them. The amazing part of Nebuchadnezzar's statement was his reference to them as the servants of the Most High God. This was a totally new attitude one not evident in his earlier question at the end of verse 15. This time, the three Jews obeyed him instantly. The mysterious fourth personage disappeared just as quickly as he had appeared. So only three men stepped into Nebuchadnezzar's presence. They certainly had no reason to fear him. The, the name most often translated as Most High God is El Eon, meaning the Supreme One. It denotes strength and sovereignty. The title is used numerous times in Daniel, but for Nebuchadnezzar to use it is most surprising. As the king's important leaders gathered around the young men, all became even more astonished. Now we see why Daniel made a point earlier of mentioning that they were thrown into the furnace fully clothed, because every article of clothing was still in place and unaffected by the fire. In fact, their hair had not been singed, and there was not even a hint of smoke smell on them. Since we know how readily fabrics absorb smoke, we realize to an even greater degree how complete this miracle was. God's deliverance of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was a great victory of faith for the Jews in captivity. They were protected from harm. They were comforted in trial. God was glorified and they were rewarded. Let us determine to be true to God no matter how difficult the pressure or punishment. God's protection transcends anything we could imagine. Proclamation, Daniel 3:28. Nebuchadnezzar had previously admitted that Israel's God, Yahweh, was a superior God in his ability to reveal mysteries, chapter 2, verse 47. Now he admitted that Yahweh's superior power because of the way he had delivered 
the condemned men from the king's own power. Since pagans believe the gods use messengers to reveal and carry out their will, the conclusion Nebuchadnezzar drew on this occasion was that the God of the Jews had sent his angel messenger to intervene, so he began by blessing this God. Nebuchadnezzar's words affirmed the superiority of God and recognized his worthiness to be worshipped. What he saw was that this God had been completely trusted by Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and that he had responded to their trust with his deliverance. He also saw that their level of devotion to God was so deep that they willingly risked their lives out of loyalty to him, even when it meant they had to stand against the word of the king himself. This was something he had never seen before. The example of these three men is one we should note today, since the culture in which we live is turning more and more against believers. There are many people who have contact we have contact with regularly who need to see in us this kind of trust, devotion, and loyalty to God. We need to see in this chapter of Daniel more than just a historical account. We need to see an up-to-date challenge that should become reality for us. God is still the same God who protected these young men. We can trust him just as they did. Not every believer, of course, is miraculously delivered. Many are ushered into God's presence as martyrs. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego understood this, Daniel 3, 8. They were gladly willing to give their lives for the God they served if that was his will. That should be our attitudes as well. Questions 1. What did God accomplish in allowing his three servants to go through such a difficult trial? 2. What caused the king to become even more angry than before? 3. Why was Nebuchadnezzar's decree foolish rather than wise? 4. What indicates the king's eagerness in this matter and what loss did this result in for him? Five, what did the king see happening when the men landed in the furnace and what does this reveal? Six, what did he observe as he kept looking into the furnace? Seven, what did Nebuchadnezzar initially think about the fourth man? Eight, what did everybody observe as the men came out of the fire? 9. What was the king's new understanding about God? 10. In what way is this incident more than historical to us? This concludes the Sunday School lesson for Sunday, January 14, 2017. Thank you for listening. God bless.